Tashdile, and welcome to Tibet this week. This is Sakina Bhatt with another edition of Weekly News on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines first. At 84, His Holiness the Dalai Lama is in excellent health. His Holiness the Dalai Lama, CTA President Dr. Lopsang Singhe and Speaker of Tibetan Parliament in exile Pema Jungne condole Arun Jetli's demise. 19th Annual Conference of 15 Tibetan Cooperatives in India begins deliberation in Dharamshala. Health Kanoi visits Office of Tibet DC, ICT and Dharma Centers. The first social, emotional and ethical learning workshop in Colombia concludes. Kapjaling Rinpoche calls on Special Advisor of the International Religious Freedom at the US State Department. Human Rights Watch released World Report 2019. The 84-year-old Tibetan spiritual leader, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, assured he is in the best of health and reaffirmed to live up to 110 years while addressing the Minnesota Tibetan Association and Tibetans in general. <laughs> ね、ジベガンリア、ビジベガンリアチェ。ね。そっちもしりや、ケケギ。せそ。ね、パンダラムザ、あと、ティシェシェ。ね、パンダラムマリア、キャラエネ、ロ、ダダチュテ、ボテ
called Integrated Settlement Development Plan, whose primary purpose is to meet the community-specific needs and challenges while at the same time improve and increase sustainability. Ten Namdil scholarship winners were also declared through lucky draw at the event, following which all the 15 Tibetan cooperatives were awarded Rs 2 lakh each from FTCI annual budget. The event also observed the 50th anniversary of Diki Lasso Cooperative Society. CTA Kalun Chokyong Wangchuk of Department of Health visited the Office of Tibet, Washington, D.C., International Campaign for Tibet, Radio Free Asia, Voice of America offices based in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday this week. The Health Kalun also gave an interview with Radio Free Asia and Voice of America. Kalu spoke about various projects under the Department of Health, including the Tibetan Medicare system and prevention and care projects during his visits to the offices and institutes. The first three-day social, emotional and ethical learning training workshop for educators in Colombia concluded on 22nd August in Tulwa City. As a pilot project, the SEE Learning will be implemented in all the six schools this year with a plan to expand to more government schools in the city next year. The event also marks the conclusion of the first SEE Learning Training Workshop for educators in three countries in South America, Chile from May 7 to 9th with the participation of 70 educators, Brazil from August 11 to 14th with the participation of 80 educators and finally Colombia. Capjuling Rinpoche met with Special Advisor Thomas Knox of the International Religious Freedom Sector at the U.S. State Department on Friday last week. Ling Rinpoche informed the Special Advisor about the dire situation in Tibet in general and religious freedom in particular. Rinpoche further mentioned about different measures introduced by CCP like setting up of monastic management communities in each monastery in Tibet to govern the daily activities of the monastery, making normal practice impossible. Rinpoche eloquently brought home the pressing threat to the Tibetan language, religion and culture in Tibet. Special advisor showed deep concern and assured that his bureau will do whatever possible. The annual Human Rights Report 2019 records that the human rights situation in Tibet has still not progressed as the Tibetans continue to face severe restriction in their religious freedom, speech, movement and assembly. Anyone exercising their human rights and steeping up against the persecution is met with arbitrary detention, imprisonment and enforced disappearance. The report also noted that Tibetans traveling on Chinese passports to India to attend His Holiness the Dalai Lama's teachings in January 2018 were forced to return early else they will face retaliation and their family members back home will suffer. China also introduced the policy of patriotic education in the monasteries to replace monastic education with their political propaganda. Monks and nuns were forced to learn and recite communist propaganda. People were urged and instigated to denounce His Holiness the Dalai Lama, forcing their loyalty toward the Communist Party. So much for this week's edition of Tibet This Week. See you next time and have a great weekend.